Hello listeners, this short slide presentation pertains uh, to the ethical theory of consequentialism. In general, consequentialist moral theories make moral worth of our actions dependent upon the overall outcomes or consequences of those actions as opposed to the motives or intentions. Our focus here will be on the most familiar version of consequentialism, which is known as utilitarianism. Uh, a little bit more on that in the next slide, but in general, I want to note here that act utilitarianism uh, focuses upon our moral decision making on a case by case basis, and we are to determine which actions will produce the best overall outcomes. Note that most utilitarians are act utilitarians. However, there is a variant that's worth mentioning here that is known as rule utilitarianism. In a nutshell, rule utilitarianism contends that there are some rules that, generally speaking, tend to produce optimistic uh, results. The general rule of utilitarianism is known as the principle of utility. The notion of utility really refers to quantity of happiness produced. Sometimes the principle of utility is interpreted as promoting the general welfare. There's also, it's also sometimes referred to as acting to promote the greatest good for the greatest number of people. Another interpretation is that its aim is to promote the most overall happiness. What is arguably one of the best strengths of utilitarianism is that it treats everybody's interests equally. What that means is, is something like this. While my interests matter very much to me, in order to be a good utilitarian, what I have to do is consider myself in the abstract. I am really just one individual whose interests are no greater or, or less than anybody else's interests. Thus, what I need to do when considering what I ought to do is, how is everybody's interest going to be affected? Uh, the notion that's also sometimes put for, f forth here is what's called the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few or the one. That's a line that some of you might be familiar with if, you're, uh, if you've watched any of the Star Trek movies, as it's the line utter, uttered by Mr. Spock uh, when he sacrifices his life in order to save the lives of the crew. In this next segment, we're going to look at some application of utilitarianism. Uh, the two specific examples that we are going to be uh, looking at are what are known as trolley car problems or trolley car thought experiments. And then we're going to move on to check out a more recent case of scenarios involving self-driving cars. Folks, so-called trolley car problems always involve a scenario in which there is an out-of-control trolley car. There is a situation in which the out-of-control trolley car is careening towards a bunch of innocent people. Only you are the one who is close to the switch. You're the only one with the opportunity to throw the switch so the trolley car goes onto another track. The problem is some other negative situation is always bound to ensue. Uh, while these trolley car thought experiments tend to seem very artificial, they are thought experiments that can be generalized to real life scenarios. This is a sketch of a typical trolley car problem. The trolley car that you see is careening towards those, uh, that group of people on the track. If you do nothing, 
it will kill those individuals. However, if you flip the switch, it will go down the other track, killing only one. Utilitarianism would argue that this one is a proverbial no-brainer. It is always better to save more lives rather than, rather than fewer. It stinks to be the one person, however, the overall happiness is what matters. Program to Kill is a provocative title of a short essay from a recent issue of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology Review. It goes over some scenarios in which self-driving cars would have to be programmed to be good utilitarians and thus end up being programmed to kill people. And in some cases, the person who would get killed might actually be the, the owner of the self-driving car. We'll go to the next slide and look at a few scenarios. Note in scenario A that the optimific from a utilitarian standpoint maneuver would be for the self-driving car to avoid killing a large group of pedestrians, thereby veering off the road and killing only one pedestrian. C is a similar scenario, except in this case we're not going to kill any pedestrians. However, if in driving off the road, the car would end up going into a wall or something of this nature, we would have a case in which the driver of the car's life would be sacrificed in order to save more pedestrians. The center 1B is, is a case in which the, the driver of the car might need to be uh, sacrificed in order to save the life of the, of the pedestrian. Although one caveat here is with the safety equipment, the car would be destroyed in scenario B, and the person inside would likely be injured, but the life of the one pedestrian would be saved. Of course, the critic might wonder, how fair is that to the guy in the self-driving car? When you're thinking about scenarios on your own and how utilitarianism would apply, it's worthwhile to consider issues surrounding uh, wartime scenarios as one case. A second case to consider might be uh, distribution of resources, particularly in disaster type situations. And one final one to think about might be if it's fair that a middle class person such as yours truly lives the way that he does while many people in the world are barely getting by. While the scope of this lecture was just to introduce utilitarianism, I hope you're already thinking a little bit about what some of the criticisms might be. Some critics question if, in fact, happiness is all that matters. Are there other values that should also be taken into consideration? As we saw with the trolley cars, we might ask about the issue of fairness. How fair is it for one person's interest to have to be sacrificed in order <clears throat> to meet the interests of, of other people? Finally, critics also wonder if utilitarianism might turn human beings into abstractions in order to consider all of our interests equally but at the same time, we end up losing our humanity in the process. What do you think about all of this?